Are you there? Is everything working? Just give me a thumbs up if you can hear me or see me. I've got another computer playing in the background with the screen just to see if I'm live, but it hasn't shown that I'm live or not. Oh, hang on. Yeah, I think it is. As long as the sound don't come on, I think we're about right. Hey, Adam, how are you, mate? <clears throat> can see you. Can you hear me? Good stuff, good stuff. Long time no speak, eh? <coughs> Hello, Fred. Ken, how are you, mate? Evening all. All right, Heath. How are you, buddy? What I've done, I've put my laptop and then put the extra TV screen that I normally have in the middle of the shed. I put that behind the camera or behind the phone so I can see the comments coming through. Because so they come on the screen and then flash off. So. <laughs> Adam, yeah. It was a test run, mate. Evening, Rod. Yeah, I didn't get a, didn't get a phone call. <laughs> Free warning. One of the OGs. <laughs> Brett, hey up, mate, how are you? Rick, uh, Jim, sorry, I was going to say Rick, it's then. Jim, how are you, buddy? Well, I've got 10 watching already. Look at that, that's not bad going. And these glasses, I got a few comments the other night about these glasses. They're actually my wives. <laughs> Cheapo ones. They're a bit thick, aren't they? <laughs> I think got a few comments about Michael Caine. <laughs> Evening, Frank. How are you, mate? So while everyone's jumping in, I know some people have got some uh, ideas of conversation. I've normally got my wingman, of course, um, Mark, um, but I thought I'd do one on my own. Well, I did one before Christmas on my own, did I? Yeah, I did one on my own before then. Worked out all right. I can waffle on for an hour or so. But yeah, any conversation ideas, bring them up as you feel fit. And uh, any tool bargains anyone's seen? Any other channels that people have seen? Any uh, Parkside stuff that I've not come across? <laughs> or Ferex from uh, Audi? I actually picked something up. I'll mention it in a minute, actually. I bought a, a wire stripper the other day. One of these little cheap, handy ones. I don't know how good they are. A little wire stripper. So uh, I'm going to check that out sometime soon. What's this? Someone give me the best tips for laying crazy paving. Sledgehammer, innit? <laughs> That's how it used to be done. I take it you've got a load of um, offcuts of stone, yeah? Sandstone or something like that, Adam? Or you're literally starting from scratch and breaking up slabs. I'm a converted, van, a converted fan, Brett. From Adam. Yeah, great channel, eh? Brett, useless to useful. I think he's up to, was it 15 ways of how to uh, reutilize a gas canister? It's probably more than that by now. Yeah, hey, I have sandstone. Yeah. That's imagination gone wild with that stuff. I ought to do it like Brett, do it as a Union Jack, mate. <laughs> In sandstone as you slab in, that'll look fantastic. Sub base. Pulled it all, pulled it all up, but I want to know the best sub base. If anyone's got any tips on that. When I did my sandstone, I just want to do I haven't cemented it in actually. I've just uh, put hardcore down. In fact, it was loads of rubble and bricks. <coughs> so I've got this tickly cough. Hang on. And uh, I whacked all that down, and then I put a, a layer of sand down. And it, once it finds its levels, then it just stays there. Just It does dip in certain angles. But I want to get that all up and then cement it all in, I think, at some point. Ah, better. Anthony, how are you? Or is it Griff? I think he likes to be known as Griff. Pretty sure that's what you said, mate. Some type one. Yeah, get a whacker plate. 
whack it in. I used an electric whacker plate, a vibrating plate when I was doing the kitchen. Obviously, you get the patch ones. Didn't want to use a patch one indoors. So I got the electric one. Brilliant. Really good. It was 110 volts. So I used a transformer. Uh, but yeah, great bit of kit. I had it for a, a day, I think it was, or a couple of days. They're not that bad. But you sort of get to that point where you think if you need it a bit longer, it probably is worth just buying one. I know these vibrating plates, you can pick them up for about 130 quid, I think. And it probably cost me about 45-ish to hire it. So... I probably could have found a second hand one for 60 quid. Uh, have you got a vibrating plate, Adam? Oh, I bought one. Dolomite, then dry, sharp sand and cement. Yeah, I'm not reading the comments. You've got a whacker. You have a whacker. Was it a petrol one? So anyone seen any tool bargains since Christmas? Yes, Patch of Wacker. Great fun. Yeah, any tool bargains? Anyone seen building materials? A lot of you know I broke my uh, broke my wrist when my arm popped off of my arm and uh, it slipped on the decking. And uh, my dad was doing the same thing, actually. He put some deck weight. He wanted to put like a non-slip uh, idea onto his decking, clean it down. And he got this stuff. He got a few of them left. I haven't put them down yet. But yeah, um, it's like a, what is it? Like a really tough sandpaper. It's like on a fiberglass backing. I don't know if you can see that. I think it works out about five or a length. I think it's uh, 1.2-ish metres long or four foot. But if you look at there, it's got like a... Well, it's fiberglass and then like a sand top and it's uh, really strong obviously lay it down the center of decking and it forms like a non-slip anti-slip surface <clears throat> you'd actually well you'd need quite a bit if you're doing a, a full decking of course but if you're just doing walkways or turning points when you turn in i don't know at a right angle where you're more likely to slip this stuff will probably work really well i've only got about five pieces of it but i am taking my decking up of course and i've been debating over the last Oh, for the last year really what to use do i put more wooden decking down or do you use pvc or do i hard cut i have to fill it up because it's about a foot deep so uh i'm thinking of the best options what's the cheapest and best option and the longevity of it as well of course if i put the pvc decking down obviously it's going to last a lot longer Bought a few mouse sanders. They only seem to last five mins. <laughs> Why don't they last anymore? It's about time the price of timber came down. It shot up after the pandemic. It hasn't come down since. I thought the uh, CLS had actually come down in price um, a bit. I think some timber has, but majority of it is staying up there. Um, like this. I'm going to change. So, yeah, Brett's going to, I think he's going to do the same. Use the PVC decking. Yeah, I mean, it's great stuff. You, you can choose your colour as well, of course. And once it's down, it stays like that. I think it's uh, UV uh, protected as well, so the colour stays the same. Um, obviously, there's no grooves in there, no grain, so no moss is going to build up and no slime and sludge and crap and God knows what else. So it'd be interesting to hear anyone that's had PVC decking for a number of years just to see what it's been like and how it stood the test of time. <coughs> Yeah, that's a good idea, Frank. Just put the uh, anti-slip at the bottom of my shoes. <laughs> Anyone that comes around, just glue on my piece on. <laughs> that's a good idea. In fact, just get rid of carpets and just stick carpet on her feet as well. <laughs> Brilliant idea, mate. Hey, Mark. How are you, mate? Over the pond in Ireland. Hi, Robin, everyone else. Spurs and is asking, but how's the risk being skated on the decking since? We've been talking about decking and the best stuff to use. Yeah, it's bearing up. All right. I've, I've got to take. I'm going back to the doctor, the hospital, a week on Monday. So they said about taking it off, and then I've got to put a like a brace on, like a, a splint in a glove, just to hold it in position for a few weeks after that. But yeah, it's going all right. I was a bit concerned because I'd left it for a couple of weeks before I went to the 
walking centre. I thought they're going to say, oh, no, it's fused together in the wrong angle or whatever, and they can't pull it out. So it meant an operation. So you get a bit concerned. But I went down, saw the, the doctor. It was actually a professor, um, which I thought was good, in the fracture clinic. And um, he says, yeah, it's in a line. So uh, we'll put a cast on it, a couple of weeks, and uh, we'll take it off and then put a, a wrist brace on. So, yeah, well pleased. And has anyone ever broke their arm recently? Because I always thought that it used to be the old plaster they used to smear on there. Well, now there's like this tape that they smear, well, they wrap it around like a bandage, and it's got this glue that's built into it. And when they dip that in hot water first, they wrap it around, it makes it like this glue, you know, solid casing, which is uh, feels really comfortable. They put like a sock on first and then pad it out around your thumb and uh, yeah well effects i seem to remember it always being plastic you had to smear on and i don't know maybe imagining it so good to see you mark thanks for jumping in so any more tool bargains that we want to shout about that we've spotted and we've seen they're using gorilla glue these nowadays yeah i'll tell you what it's, it's, it's using something similar I'm almost surprised we can use this in uh, other applications. I don't know, repairing stuff, guttering. <laughs> Did it in black. I actually asked it, can I have it in black? Because I knew it was going to get ditched. Only in the children's ward. <laughs> so you can have blue and pink and whatever, but they won't do it in there, so never mind. Yeah, black could be the best colour, I would have thought. You know, if you're using it all the time, it's going to get ditched, isn't it? All around here on the fluffy bit. There's not so bad, but it, around the edge there. That's fiberglass, Rob. You'd have thought so. It feels like it. Except it's cloth. Any more antique centres and places soon, Rob? Not yet. No, I will do. Um, this has held me up a little bit because it's just stopped me from doing bits I wanted to do. Um, but yeah, I want to go back down the Anchor Surplus store again soon. Um, what did I want to get from there? There was something I wanted to get. I wanted to... Oh, ammo boxes. I'm going to get some more ammo boxes because they're going to come in really handy, I think. I think they were £2.50. Here's the other one. I haven't done anything with it yet. Let's get it now. Up here. Up a little shelf up here. £2.50. The rusty ones. That was the best of a bad lot. But not bad, aren't they? £2.50. I haven't even opened it up yet. It's seized shut. But, yeah. Clean it up. All sorts of uses. So I thought I'm going to grab a few more of them. I think if you wanted to do immaculate, con well, almost immaculate condition, I think they're about £6.50-ish. But yeah, to answer your question, Frank, nothing on the horizon yet. What am I missing here? Am I missing anything? Never broke a bone in 55 years. Not bad going, Griff, that... Yeah, I'll go back soon, Mark. Yeah, great place, wasn't it? I'll, um, I made it quite a lengthy, well, it was that a lengthy video, or was you think that was a, a short video? Sometimes I'm tempted to just put a, like a raw video on of places like that. But I thought, oh, it might get a bit boring, so I sort of make little snippets. Like I did that antique centre in Ilkeston in Derbyshire. I took snippets out and then, but would it be better to go raw and just go all the way around and then you can just pick and stop where you want to stop in the video? Um, there's plenty of play, other places to go. Where I am in Nottingham, there's another one called um, Nottingham City Centre near the train station. And they've got a similar sort of antique place where they've got different stalls for different people on numerous floors. Hop, it used to be called Hopkinson's, which is a DIY merchants for many years in, in Nottingham. And it had probably six floors. And I say the, the, the DIY store went and then this company took it over and uh, renting little stalls for people selling antiques and vintage antiquities and stuff. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to go and see there at some point. I'll video that as well. Um, buh, buh, buh. Hello, Jason. Road Rage Jason. Take your names, Jason. No road, no road rage today, I hope. <laughs> Dancing with hard works. How are you, mate? Um, if I missed here. Little late, but finally here. So now he's in, uh, Jason's in Texas. So what's that? Quarter past one, is it? In the afternoon. Late dinner break, yeah? Late lunch break. Where's the ammo boxes from? Uh, Anchor Surplus store in uh, Nottingham. It's like an army surplus, army and 
uh, navy surface surplus store. But yeah, good aren't they? A million uses. These are classed as the rusty ones, and they were say two pound fifty each. Not bad at all. Nottingham, home of the biggest England flag. Is it? Didn't know that. I saw on TV. I didn't know that. What is that, what, what, is that in the Guinness Book of Records then? <laughs> on the Town Hall. Ah, I didn't know that. You've taught me something there. I need to check that out. Can't remember who reviewed the Aldi Tool pick set for seven quid but just had to go and get a set. That was me. That was uh, Frank. <laughs> there you go. Small world, isn't it? <laughs> so the tool pick, was it any good, Frank? Yeah, a bit far away from Sunderland. No, it's massive. <laughs> Oh, I'll have to check that out. England flag. 150, yeah, quarter past one. In the afternoon in Texas. What's the weather? Did the hail come yesterday? <laughs> yeah, I knew it was, it was from someone here. What's this here? I missed something. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, yeah, Heath was mentioning about the uh, ammo boxes. Turned these into a Bluetooth stereo and cassette player. Or maybe on 8-track. So you put the cassette player inside there, yeah? And the stereo, the Bluetooth stereo, Bluetooth stereo and cassette player. Oh, wow. The hail is on for this afternoon and evening. Well, I hope you don't get the big boys. I hope you get the smaller ones. I think it came through your roof last time, didn't they? You were saying yesterday. Yep, a bargain. Used them a few times. Worth the purchase. So I'll look out for them then. So they were at Aldi. So that's the... In fact, did I see... That's the tool zone. It's work zone. Work zone, is it? I think that's the brand there. Or is it Ferex? Well, Ferex is the power tools. So it'd be work zone, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. Ammo box on the back of a motorbike for a top box. Good idea. Got this tickly throat. I don't know what it is. It's probably because I'm at this funny angle. I mean, neck's up like that. That's not too bad. Tickly something in my throat, like a frog in my throat. Who leaves a tea bag in tea? Mate of mine did that for years and I always laughed at him. Said, oh, tea bag left in tea. Did it once. I thought, yeah, I don't quite like that. So I never take the tea bag out now. Let it brew and brew and brew. Don't have it before you go to bed though. You'll be up all night. So here we go. What's we got here, man? What have we missed out on? Don't drink tea. I think don't drink tea, eh, Jim? Only coffee. <laughs> yeah, tea bag in tea with Yorkshire. Your spoon will stand up in it. Yeah, it would. <laughs> Evening, Ian. How are you? <laughs> like a penguin staring at the stars. Yeah, I probably was actually. I'm talking about I'm talking about my uh, your fall, aren't you? My fall, aren't you, mate? Oh, where did I get the Parkside pants? I wonder where. <laughs> Another little bargain, Centre Isle. I got that when they were cheap. A few people slate them though. They say they're not that good. For what I use it as a DIYer, does everything I want it to do. Change the blade on it. Maybe it's got a smaller blade. I want your shed goat anyway. That's what we need to do soon. We need to go back onto the shed goat. I need to get my 
schedule plans so we do shed space and get back on the shed goat. Ian's been shed goat for far too long, I think. <laughs> Tea monster, Griff. Yeah, so to be honest, the van saw in. I've had no issues with it at all. I think it's Shapak made by. But uh, yeah, great big kit. Easy to access as well. It's got the little keys one, two, three, four. Pop a screwdriver in each one. Dun, 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 the whole lot comes out. You swap blades over dead easy. Ha <laughs> ha, shed goats. Shed goats. What other um, bandsaws have people got, and what do you reckon to them? Have you got any other? Has anyone got any other cheap ones like Shapak? I suppose they do a Ferrex version as well, don't they? Oh, gaming station. Yeah, how's the project over there? Exactly as it was seven, eight months ago. It's just on the back boiler. Like every time I've got a bit of chance to do something, I go and do something else, then do something else, then fall and do something else. So um, it is going to happen. It's, once I get a roll with that, I'll get it done in a matter of a couple of weeks or something, but like a few days at the weekend or whatever, or a few hours at the weekend. But I need to, I know what I'm going to do with it, and I don't want to ruin the surprise because I think it's, if it works, it'll be really good. <laughs> I'm sorry, ruin the surprise a little bit. Let me see if uh, it's going to open up quite magically. I'll leave it at that, I think. <laughs> I probably said in another video what I was going to do. I'll lose track. Of a hobby master or something like that. It's not great, though, to be honest. My bonus was 20 quid second hand. Must be 30 years old and take some time getting going. Lol, but it works. I just realised, every time I go to the screen, you can see me bold patch. When we bought completely bold head. Got a little bit left on top. Right, can I read from here? Clash worse. Your shed looks tidy, well done. You haven't seen that side, mate. <laughs> it's still full of house stuff. I picked up a bargain the other day, the other week. I got a metal shed. You know them metal shed, sheds that are like corrugated? They go together with self-tappers and a few nuts and bolts here and there. Ten quid, already dismantled. Six foot by four foot. I've got space down the end of the garden. I'm just going to put it up on this platform I've got. I'm going to get all this stuff that's boxed up. A lot of it's, I'm going to take it out to the car boot, I think, because there's a lot of stuff that's too good to be getting, to, to throw away. And then there's a load of stuff my wife wants to keep in case she wants to redecorate the house. We've just done the house, but there's stuff in there she's undecided on. So I'm going to put them in boxes, store them in there. Then I'm going to clear and run. I can get in cupboards. I can get to cabinet shelves, all sorts. And then I'll have a proper sort out. And then I'll show you what I've done in a video. Um, what was I saying? Uh, Iron Hell bandsaw, cheap but does me. Yeah, uh, Iron Hell. I've got the Iron Hell. What have I got? Iron Hell grinder. Of course I have the nine inch one. Is it Iron Hell? You remind me, a red one. I've got an Iron Hell um, table saw as well. Actually, that's under a cupboard under there. That I cleaned up and I've not done anything with since. It needs a riving knife on there. Oh my god. And of course, Brett's got the daddy of the band saws. When I was up at Brett's place, yeah, thanks for the day as well, mate. It was great up there. Um, hospitality, spot on. And uh, he's got a band saw. It's a, remind me, Brett, I can't remember what it's called now, but solid cast uh, top on it. He got a real bargain on that. Watch the video. No one's seen it already. It'll be tall around uh, Brett's man cave. And to say as well, there might be a few people watching already know this and don't let the cat out of the bag straight away, but um, sheds we're doing, visiting other people's man caves, workshops, etc. There's a few people that have sort of lined up in pencil. This has put me back a little bit. Um, but those who are watching will know who they are and there's others as well. But I've got a bit of a plan so I can visit quite a few places in the coming months. So look out for that. Click the notification bell as well, because at the minute you'll probably notice I'm putting videos out randomly. I haven't got a day, a time. I'm the most impatient person you can ever imagine. So if I've edited a video, I cannot wait to put it out there. I know that some people like to give it a few days. If I've edited it, it's ready to go. I'm just going to press upload. It's one of my things. <laughs> 
my life foibles. So, um, yeah, so put your notification bell and you'll see when a video comes up. It'll be, it might be a tour of someone else's shed or a workshop or man cave or whatever, or one of my videos. So, um, yeah, right, which one am I looking at? Comments. Duh, duh, duh. Axminster, that was it, Brett. Axminster. Parkside work, work trousers. Double, doubled line, brilliant during the winter. Record power, it's... <coughs> I got a record power, three up, it, uh, 300 bandsaw. Heard boiler suits from Parkside as well. Not seen them. It's in the t-shirts. I should have... No, they're all too small. I was going to buy some Parkside t-shirts and they were too small. I was going to send one down to market for more, more adventures, but yeah, they're all... They're tiny. Uh, yeah, most second hand as well. Now, that, that one there, I only bought as a one-off, really. It was, a new, it was on offer. It's 100 quid at the time. I think there are a lot more than that now. That was new as well. Oh, uh, here, Adam. I'd love to come and see mine, but I'm shy. You don't sound shy for one minute. I've already asked Adam if you when I get into a rhythm of going around uh, people's sheds, and I've asked him, he says, oh, I'm too shy. I reckon you're reveling it. <laughs> You'll be setting up a YouTube channel in no time. Ooh, sounds a bit odd. Yeah, it does. <laughs> we'll have the confidence. Yeah, I reckon you would. Well, I don't, I, I don't know, mate, you're so, yeah. I can I comment on that. But it's good you come on here, mate. Am I missing anything? Yeah, second hand off eBay or Facebook or them sort of things. I use Gumtree quite a lot. Quite like Gumtree. I think that's probably owned by eBay, is it, or something? One thing I'm doing, you might have seen Reggie. I haven't seen Reggie tonight. He's not been on here, has he? I don't know what's up with Reggie. Sean, who normally comes on, he's got all the prior engagements, so uh, he, he already said he can't come on. But Reggie will know, and a few others will as well, who follow uh, Scout Crafter uh, channel. He's done a screwdriver channel, make a screwdriver challenge, make your own screwdriver from scratch. And uh, Reggie's already done his. Go and check his out. Real beast of a thing that is. <laughs> That's going to last forever. And uh, I'm a bit. I'm a bit um, yeah, I can only use one hand, so uh, I'm gonna, still going to do it. Uh, I've got an idea. It's going to be a lot smaller scale than I was hoping for, but if uh, any of you fancy doing a challenge, go and check Scout Crafter's channel. He's put a uh, challenge out to make your own screwdriver and then uh, send all your entries in. Um, I think the, the end date is the 1st of May, I think it is. Frank's well less six me. <laughs> yeah, that's from Adam saying he's in London accent. I sit on the fence, accent-wise. I'm in the Midlands, so I'm neither. If go to the north, we'll think I'm from the south. Go to the south, think from the north. So I just sit in the middle, like the Watford Gap. <laughs> Certainly not in the sound of uh, bow bells, anyway. So I was going to show you. That was it. So I was at Parkside the other week, and wire stripper one of these basic ones i normally use let me show you these I normally use these and uh they're okay but sometimes they sort of i don't know they sometimes don't grip enough and i don't get the settings right and it just they just find it awkward sometimes so using like uh snip sometimes works better where you can just pull them and uh i've got this here so just keep it in your pocket really small just for stripping cable and with these you can actually strip lengths of cable as well and it can also strip uh, coax, so it takes the outer and the inner out. It's got a setting for that. I haven't gone through the instructions, actually. I'll do a quick video on that, I think, at some point. Four ninety nine. I know it might be good, might be crap. We'll soon to find out. I'll we'll play about with it. Right, what am I missing here? Uh, screwdriver. I had a stand for my leg virus and I'll go screwdriver challenge. Just made a stand for my leg vice and anvil. 
I'll have a go at that screwed off channel. You ought to, yeah. He'll scout or put his the uh, email you're going to send it to, I think, a week before uh, the end date, which says the 1st of May. Screwdriver change big hammer in it. Anyone going to make a central? That's a point. Yeah, when is that? I was going to go there with Mark, actually. I might still go. Good to go, wasn't it? Is it, is it? it is April, isn't it? April or May. I've said that much on. I've not really looked into it. May. May. Hope to go to make a stretch, but I haven't got tickets yet. So, oh, so I've got to get tickets first. Yeah, I think I'm going to get so I'm going to get I'm going to get a ticket. Yeah, definitely. Good day out, wasn't it? Good to meet up with anybody that's down there as well. Frank will have to meet up. Or may see you before. Never know. Oh, how's Mark getting on? Did he? I think he did the panto. I spoke to him, messaged him a few times. He did the panto. Pretty sure he said he did the panto. We didn't get down to see him, though, unfortunately. I'd have been there with my camera. Um, but, yeah, I think uh, last time I spoke to him, he's going to let me know when he's going to come back on to Shed Space. So I'm just going to leave it with him. Um, he's having a bit of uh, me time, and uh, I'm sure he'll be back soon. We'll certainly let you know. <laughs> when in May, end, beginning, middle. You going down as well then, Rod? Thinking about it. Adam, did you say you were going down as well? Or up? Should we say? Oh no, it will be the cross, won't it? Because you're. Oh, I don't know if you remember. You're Lincolnshire, way, aren't you? It's the same day as the... What's the DGR? DGR? DGR. I'm missing something. I'm having a dim moment. Yeah, links, yeah, links, yeah. So anyone seen any good videos recently? Obviously, Colin Furs um, with his tunnel. Did you see that other guy? who's doing a tunnel, um, actual tunnel under his back garden. He's got a well, can't remember his name now. Tunnel in Dave, is it? Can't remember. So Colin Furs has dug, he's done his man cave at the end of his garden. He's dug underneath a tunnel to connect there from his garage and then to his front drive. And then he's making another one for his DeLorean to go into. Fantastic, over the, over the top stuff in it. But there's another guy drilling, a, um, drilling, digging a tunnel from a well he's got in the back of his garden. And then he's taking it down the length of his garden and then coming up in his house. And, uh, yeah, great escape stuff. Tunnel Dave, that's it, that's it. Check his channel out if you haven't already. He's made, um, like, a dolly or a bogey he lies on his back with. And he's made it out of two of those... Um... God, I'm used to be names. What are they? The motorised scooter things with the wheels, the tyres on either side. And he's fixed that so he can go down it in this skate inside his tunnel and um, it's electric operated. And it's a vent, put air in there. He's got this pump, these bellows and this silhouette of this guy pumping the air into this tunnel. Real, real inventor. Real uh, over the top. Yeah, typical. It always, it always reminds me, people like us, and I'm not to that extent, I don't think. I'm a bit extravagant when it comes to building stuff I suppose but there's a lot more people out there that are worse than me but um always reminds me chichi chichi bang bang cracks its pots in his uh workshop and all these wild thing wonderful things going on keeps you alive doesn't it that's a weird hobby digging i couldn't do it either mate i couldn't do it. i'm claustrophobic as well uh didn't used to be as i wasn't afraid of heights when i was younger as well but as i got older afraid of heights claustrophobia and digging as well god that's why i gave up my allotment 
But what of an achievement when it's done? Uh, distinguished Gentleman's Ride. Ooh, never heard of that. Screw bike video. It's great. Screw bike video. Oh, the. Is that what we're talking about Colin Furs? With the. Um, so that's what you mean. The uh, corkscrew driven buggy thing. I think that's what you mean, isn't it? Dancers. Great escape, lol. Yeah. Going to Van West, 10th May for the weekend. Yeah, see that video. Yeah, see that video, yeah. <laughs> yep, to me, I have work phobia. <laughs> oh, James Brutton screw bike. Looking out to that. You want to check that out? You ought to check, if you've, you've obviously seen Colin Fur's screw, it's not. It's like a corkscrew driven buggy. He made one, I don't think he worked out that well. He made like um, a JCB dumper, but he had these big ball that rotated around and it was meant to move in one direction. I don't think he worked out that well. All on the same day, eh, Adam? Yeah, so the, the arcade machine over there, I'll show you, <coughs> I'll show you the main console. Probably showed it in, a, well, I did show it in another video. So what you buy is an emulator like this, and it's got thousands upon thousands of classic arcade games in there. And um, is it working okay? Seems good. Does it seem okay about breaking up? So this is it, an emulator. So in there, um, you obviously got dual player, so two joysticks and all the buttons. Thousands and thousands of games already built in. It connects to either a VGA, which is there, I think it's a VGA, which can go into any monitor, or a HDMI into there, into any monitor. On and off button, power supply, uh, audio, I think, volume. And then USBs, because you can update the game as well. Look at the dust on this, look. It's been sat in, it's worse than this. I cleaned it down a few weeks ago. So yeah, plan is to set, sit that in the bottom of that toolbox, and then lid comes down, TV in the back there, the monitor, and then the shell is going to lift up on like uh, little dampers, and then there's going to be some extra little gadgetry in there as well, and it's going to look like it's in a suitcase. So I can hang it on a wall, play games, it drops down like this, play the games like that. Or have it on a worktop as well. But I was going to put actuators in there and all sorts of things. It's going to be a little bit magical if it works. Got loads of ideas. It's just time to do it. Been watching Alan Milliard rebuild a Norton V8 concept bike. Interesting. Alan Milliard. Milliard is a god. Ooh. Last game I played was the Space Invaders. Well, that's on there as well, mate. And Pac-Man and all the old favourites. You remember Grandstand where you had the two, doo -doo -doo, or Ping, Pong, whatever it was. Two bats, the ball bats, and bats. It's got all that on there. And then it's got the later stuff as well, like the 80s and the 90s. Even, I think, to early 2000s. It's got loads of games. It just shows how far we've come where we used to have a massive game about this size with a cartridge. Plug into a machine to play one game, and that's got tens of thousands of them built into one little chip amazing stuff so it's better than the normal shed space no lag well that is from using this phone it's got to be using uh 5g plus i'm wondering because it's normally me and Ma well mark yeah both together mark and myself doing it at the same time is that taking up speed does that make it lag i don't know but it's good that it's not uh lagging yeah, that's a good good indication for when we do uh, Shed Go together then, so we can get the answers in quickly. There's no excuses then. No internet was lagging. <laughs> no downtime. Or some retro gaming, yeah. 
got a grandstand still in a dodgy. We still got a grandstand. Wow. Some age on it. What's about 40 years old? Ragnar, what have you done to yourself? Oh, I broke my arm. <laughs> well, it's the top of my bone, my radius bone. It's coming off in a week and a half, week on Monday. If that's what you're referring to. Or is it my glasses? <laughs> yeah, they're a bit thick, aren't they? Yeah, I've been called Michael Caine. Brick top as well, I was got called the other day. Off um, lock, stock and two smoking bra. No, it wasn't. It was snatch, wasn't it? That was it. My lag, not yours. Thoughts, I, I'm told we are getting fibre in 2027. Ah, oh, not long then, mate. Defender was my favourite game. Point Dexter. Yeah, I remember that one. Point Dexter. It was, what was the other one? Manic Miner. And um, uh, that was on... It's a Manic Miner. Um, what's the other one? Jet, uh, Jet Set Willy. I think it was. Frogger, Donkey Kong. I suppose it's what era you were you grew up in. And did you carry on playing games when you're into your twenties or <laughs> I know these people that's that play games forever, never stop. I mean you look at some of the graphics on games now. I haven't played on a games console for years, but you look at some of the oh, amazing. I had a go on the um my lad's got a, uh, well, his friend had a MetaQuest. You know the ones you put in your face? And it's like the um, virtual reality thing. That is wild. And then you've got these two triggers in your hand for like shooting as you're walking around. Well, I couldn't stand up because it's so disorientating. You have to sit down. But then like, shush, shush, shush. people are coming at you from everywhere. Still play on my retro Xbox 360. Yeah. But 360s have been out 20 years, haven't they? 20 years? But when they came out, that was a real revolution, wasn't it? I think it was... There was a big fuss about the game. Uh, Halo, when it first came out. What was that game? It wasn't a video game. It was a proper game where you had the... You had two guns at the end of each of the table and you shot these ball bearings across the table, I think. One at one end, one at the other. Oh, it's still, still, still got Halo on uh, Xbox then. Yeah, I think it started off with that game. Yeah, what's that game? It wasn't a video game. You had two guns fixed to the top and you used to show, shoot these ball bearings at, at the other side of the table. A bit like was it Shuffle Puck, but it wasn't Shuffle Puck. It was shooting these bearings. I can't remember. Cro uh, crossfire. Crossfire. Was it Crossfire? Something like that. Crossfire! Hey, old Frank. Yes, Bullseye was called Love Playing with My Brother. Bullseye. Oh, it was Bullseye, was it? Oh, there might have been two then. <laughs> yeah, I'm forward watching a YouTube short thinking it was the real thing. Yeah, that's the thing, isn't it? The graphics now, it does, looks like the real thing. Gran Turismo on PlayStation 4. There was, um, it's come on Prime actually, Amazon Prime. Um, I've never played, apparently it's a game, but it's now been made into a series. Uh, Fallout, that was it. And I started watching it last night actually. And uh, yeah, it was all right, but I thought, is this going to drag on a bit? And it just seemed a little bit far fetched for me. I don't know if anyone wants, I don't know if the whole series or not. But yeah, Fallout, it's based on a real game apparently. It's, the game was meant to be really good, so they made it into a series, but. The start of it was amazing. It was like a 1960s sort of, I won't give it away, but it was sort of really 1960s to start off and then it went into all sorts of other things. And uh, yeah, it was uh, it started off well, but halfway through, loving it so far. Oh, you're loving it, Heath. I probably ought to stick to it then. I give up sometimes. It caught me. I was watching it thinking, oh, this is good, this is good. And then it sort of, I don't know, I thought, is this going a bit too far-fetched? And yeah. 
I've been caught in the trap before when you start watching a series and you never really get to the end. And that series lost. Was it lost? Or on that desert island? Gave up with that. Gave up with the um, Walking Dead as well. Is it Walking Dead? The one that's about 20 series in there. You find halfway through you're watching a series and you, it's like 10 minutes in real life, but the whole series is used in then 10 minutes. Pay Call of Duty for a few years, then started my YouTube stuff. Don't have time for both, that's it. Yeah. I think YouTube's more constructive, mate. <laughs> Anything else anybody has been watching recently? It's worth a shout out. It's when you're invested in a film and you get I don't know, 20 minutes in and think, oh, do I carry on? Or is, you know, it's not that good. And so I leave it now. And then you carry on and think, oh, I should have given up after 20 minutes. Yeah, Lost was the biggest part of, yeah. It started so good. It did. A real original a format for a, a series. But... I think they became greedy. They didn't realise what it was going to do. And they thought, how long can we drag this out for? I never even saw the end. I never even saw, I heard about what happened. Well, I didn't know what was going on, but I heard someone saying what happened in the end. And I didn't really care at that point. Giving up. The old man. I think I've seen that. I think I've seen that. But I'm not going to give it away in case someone else hasn't seen it. I'm going to check it tonight. What was it on, Brett? Gentlemen, oh yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah, if you haven't seen the gentleman, just if you want, just no thinking involved. It's just funny the whole way through. Well, I think it is personally. I don't know what you thought to it. Oh, yeah, you've already said it's really good. Yeah, clever. They, they got the idea from the film, didn't they? So they put it into a series. But it's so funny. Some of the clips in there, it's hilarious. It won't be everyone's cup of tea, but. I was, I've been telling a few people about it, expecting them to go, well, oh, it's not that good, but uh, brilliant, all of it. So, uh, Disney Channel, CIA agent. Ooh, I have to check that out. The old man. Oh, yeah, he's worth some chicken. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> What's the other guy's name? Oh, I'm not going to give it away, but. Oh, what's his name? I think he's from up north. Uh, I can't remember his name. He's later on in the series. I can't remember his name now in it, but he's a great character as well. They're all brilliant characters. Just, I just don't think you've got to put any thought into it. Just let it go, go along with it because it's so far fetched. It's out of this world. The Wire. Griff says, I'll I watch what the wife, wife watches. <laughs> Unless you're on your phone and watching YouTube, of course. <laughs> the Wire, I've not seen any of them yet. That's with uh, Vicky McClure, and she's actually from Nottingham as well. Um, friend of a friend knows her from years ago, actually. Um, but yeah. She's the boss of telly, yeah. What's that? Whist, whisting on BBC4. The third series is now Norwegian English. Is that whisting? I'm reading that right, Ken. Yeah, I tend to watch YouTube. I think a lot of people do. I go in spits and spurts. Sometimes I'm watching. If it's good stuff's on TV, I'll watch it on there, like Netflix, etc. But then I go back to YouTube. What I actually did do over Christmas, I um, I went the premium, paid the 20-odd quid or whatever it is, a month, so I have no adverts. Yeah. It's, it's, it depends how much you're watching YouTube, of course. But for the time I was watching it, yeah, it's worth every penny. Mm -hmm. Rod's off now. Good to see you, Rod. You take care. 
Yeah, I'm going to shoot soon. Where are we? How long have we been on? Oh, we've been on 50 minutes. Wow. Dad's Army. Can't beat Dad's Army, can you? There's just some one-liners that will be hilarious for years to come. Oh, I've got something in my eye now. Oh, I'm fidgeting. Touching my eyes. Don't bother with the passenger. Not that good. Yeah, I saw that advertised. Oh! There's this film called The Passenger, isn't there? We're on a, a spaceship. I take it it's not that one. It's a series. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Rod's right. Don't forget the thumbs up. If you're watching now, give me a thumbs up. It always helps me channel out. Cheers, Rob. Yeah, dancers. Um, dancers. Dad's army. Brilliant. Yeah, the TV series. Yeah, I've flicked past that, so I'm glad I didn't watch it now. Cowboy series with Kevin Costner is good. Can't remember what it's called. Oh. Well, we can easily find out, can't we? Look into Google. Cowboy series with Kevin Costner. Funny enough, was it last night? I was flicking through the TV and thinking, what would I watch? I haven't watched The High Woman yet. I think that's got Kevin Costner in it. I think I started watching it last time, and I don't know, it didn't, it didn't draw me in. So I started watching it again last night, and I was on it for five minutes, then I watched something else. Yellowstone, there you go, well done, Brett. There was a spin-off of Yellowstone, didn't they? Because I've never seen Yellowstone either. Yeah, we're all saying Yellowstone. No, I've not seen Yellowstone. Gentleman Jack, that's got, um, uh, she used to be in Coronation Street. I never watched it. Gentleman Jack, I can't remember her name now. The Highway from the 80s with Flash Gordon in it. Is that another one then? I'm talking about the Highwayman from three years ago, I think. I didn't know about that one. Highway from the 80s with Flash Gordon in it. I thought he only did Flash Gordon, or he only, he only starred in Flash Gordon, <laughs> the actor who played him. I don't know, did he play in other films, maybe? 1889, I think. Then 1923. Saran Jones, there we go. You're on the ball, you are, Brett. Yogi lived in Yellowstone, <laughs> Giant Stone Park. Boo boo. <laughs> Just can't. Brett's about to say something. Loved his picnic baskets. Miss some bits Ah, oh, that's what it's called, is it? 1889, I think. That's the follow on from Yellowstone. Then 1923. It's got um, a few uh, English celebs, I think, in it. Cheers, Frank. Yeah, I'm about to shoot anyway, mate. So good to see you. Well, good to hear from you. Thanks for commenting. I'll see you soon. Cheers, bud. Yeah, I think I want to call it about there anyway. So, look, it's been fantastic to catch up with you. Again, you've just kept the conversation flowing. Harrison Ford, Helen Mirren. That was it. I was trying to think. I was going to say the Queen, but yeah, Helen Mirren. Um, yeah. Look, thanks everyone to, for watching. It was a bit of a spur of the moment thing yesterday. I was trying out my phone to see if live worked, and then I went to live for about 15 minutes. I said, well, let's do another one tonight. So, uh, you've nearly been an hour. So, that has just flown by. Like you won't believe for me anyway. I hope it has for you as well. And um, yeah, I'll see you in the next video. In fact, we'll do this again next week, shall we? I'm pretty sure. It might be on the Friday, though. I'll let you know. I'll give you plenty of advance notice. And there'll be a few other videos to follow as well. So thanks very much. Give me a thumbs up. really helps me. 
Put, click the notification bell as well in case I do one spontaneous. And then if you're doing nothing, you can jump on as well. Thanks for watching. Take care. Cheers.